Um, so, so this is all about the, the fourth report and the final one on the Internet of Things um, called Smacked in the City. And um, it's just fun to, to let you know that um, when we count the downloads of the reports, I'm not sure that you're aware of, uh, of, of the figures of the downloads, <clears throat> but um, we are around 25,000 downloads of the first three. So that's, that's really nice. So since we've been doing uh, reports, we've also been able, being able to, to get a bigger audience, at least um, reach a larger audience. Now the the city one, the last one, um, is um, the, can be applied to whatever a smart city should do or could be. Um, in um, so we've looked in the in the second report, for instance, on empathic things, more on the the human behavior side. Um, that's a strong message. In the, in the first one. We looked at um, this concept of waste reduction in a, in a holistic way, with lots of examples. Also, already of some of the cities. So, so that's that's an important message from the first one. So you can reduce waste in in many different ways. And um, the fourth one on the industrial side is a lot to do about predict predictions, making predictions. So the, I think the three ones already give some. Nice start for the for the fourth called um, Smack and the City. Um, now, I would like to start with an interesting uh, quote, saying that internet has changed our lives, but not yet our cities. Uh, yet, then we should we should add that. And that that quote comes from the the chief architect from the city of Barcelona. Um, not a nice architect. Um, as we know it, but um, you know, the, 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 an architect um, on, um, on, the, on the real life side, so the buildings, etc. And I found so, this. Uh, uh, can I inter interject you for a second? Um, maybe not everybody is aware of how these reports are created, wh where they're from, and why you are now talking about them. So maybe you can sketch a little bit of context, what type of reports these are, and. Uh, why it's interesting to talk about them in this call. Um, so, so can you explain, Eric, what, what do you mean with the question? So in general, what we do with reports, um, I think different things. So, so one could be um, defining a, a vision on a certain topic um, and drive interaction with our customers. That's another one. Are you looking for these kinds of uh, things, Eric? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. I'm not aware, uh, sure that everybody is aware that there have already been three reports out on uh, Internet of Things, okay. uh, how people use them and what they can do with them. And I think this call is so that Sedity Labs fellows and members can know about these reports. So that's one that we simply know that it's there, and then secondly that we know the content of this, especially this first report so that we as Sujiti Labs people can sort of speak to this topic. So I would invite people to listen to your introduction, not just as, hey, this is a funny, good story, but also as uh, an introduction to how you can then use this report in discussion and dialogue with your customers. And I think that's at the end of your presentation, we want to talk a little bit about is how, if and how we can use this towards our customers. So that, a little bit of context may be interesting uh, to provide um, when uh, when talking about this. Uh, secondly, I can tell you that the presentation is now up, so hopefully everybody can actually uh, see it. So, so sorry for that interruption, uh, Menno. By all means, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, thank you for that. I think that's helpful, Eric. So I'm going back to so the same accounts maybe for the Internet of Things. Not sure. So I, I think everybody has heard about the topic. Um, we'll, I will not go to the basics, but but start it off from from the city perspective. Um, so coming from this uh, expression saying that the internet has changed our lives, but not our cities. 
uh, it's interesting to to just give you three examples of how how huge new technologies uh, or how potentially new technologies can change our city. Just to have a, a, a better idea uh, on that, and, and and I just want to give three of them. And the first one is um, um, is uh, about drones. Uh, everybody knows drones. Uh, everybody has well, many of, many of you probably heard about all the activities around that. Um, some say it will never happen. Um, Amazon or, and Google are, are saying it's certainly going to happen. But um, when drones are starting to deliver stuff to the cities, it um, it can really change the way, well, at least the way we look at the cities. If you look up and you see all kinds of drones, uh, that's a possibility. Um, or drones being used instead of other types of transport. Um, there are even talks about uh, delivering uh, pizza drones. Um, in the Netherlands, there's a, a drone in the news last week about um, that could save people's lives, so being on the spot earlier than an ambulance, for instance. So just to give you an idea of if this is, if this is going to happen, what will it do with the cities? A second one is um, autonomous driving, and I like the, the, the truck driving vehicles coming from Mercedes, for instance. So just imagine if, um, if, if we're not driving a car anymore ourselves, but the machines and Google and Audi, and they're all working on it, uh, how it could change the city. We all probably are aware of how much a role a uh, normal car plays in the city today, and, uh, and, but it certainly has played an important role how cities developed in the past. Um, now, from this concept of driverless cars, you can also imagine that um, you don't need to park your car. Your, park can, your car can drive home after it has dropped you up, off on, um, on your, uh, at, at work or, or another place to go. Um, the trucks driverless can change anything, uh, can change a lot in the logistic systems. So this is also um, a, f a future of the cities, and it's all about connecting and in, and in making everything intelligent. And the third one is um, one I really fell in love with a little bit is um, B. I call it let's call it beacon technology. So the possibility that Things in the city, especially shops, can connect to you through your phone, knowing that there's a person close to you. Um, if it's connected with a, a card, it also knows who you are. And um, imagine that you walk through a street where you have a experience um, quite different than, than today, where the shop owners are able to connect to you and invite you to come in. Um, okay, it, it can become a nightmare because you know your phone is constantly buzzing. Uh, yes, but um, the other way around, if, if there's a solution to find for that issue, then the real experience can be different. Plus, the recovery of cities where shops are empty or they they leave the city because everybody's shopping online. You can be online in the city or, on, or I don't know how to call it on or offline, but it will be a totally different experience. So that beacon technology um, is given as an example also in, in, the, in the report. So three possible changes in of cities caused by technology. And that's why we love to talk about SMACT in the cities, the social, the mobile analytics, and cloud and things coming together. We also like smart, but smart tends to forget the important role of technology and the processes of, of adoption of the technology. It, it takes a lot for granted that everything will become smart without you know, really knowing what smart is. And um, we think it's, it's, it's even more interesting to just talk about the technology and the interaction and the acceptance of the technology. So, so that's why we we talk about a a change and a tipping point. We we project 2020 as a possible tipping point for the Internet of Things. So the things there are 
anything between 50 and 100 billion connected things. And we have seen the other ones, um, cloud coming in 2016, a prediction of a 2 billion revenue uh, spent on cloud. Um, analytics uh, could be 2012, that's behind us, mobile, 2008, um, the, the smartphone, and social 2004. So, and there's a graph in the report about that. So on the one hand, we say, okay, it's, it's yet to come because these things are, um, and sensors are um, now coming to the market and they're now changing, um, be changing, beginning to change at least parts of our lives. Um, and that should be taken into account. So it's 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 coming. Um, we haven't. Um, Internet has changed our lives. It hasn't changed our cities yet, but it will um, in the in the coming decade. We will see the start of that. Um, that's all clear, Eric. I'm talking to you. Um, yeah. Yep. So so coming from that. Um, Addressing what a smart city is is very difficult. If you if you can see the slide on the PDF I've sent you, there's a some people so there's a group of, of cities that say, okay, there's a few sorts of smartness. It's about caring, security, uh, less regulation, um, it's about learning, etc. So that's very interesting, but it's quite a lot. And we took another take on smart cities and put them in in three groups and said okay if you if you talk if you want to know how people look at at smart cities and there's a lot of research done then let's look at three concepts to better understand what a smart city is and from each of these we give some examples and we start with a very interesting one called city in a box which is quite the idea that you can order a city in a box and just put it somewhere. Um, but And there are examples, it's called Mazdar City, for instance, and uh, New Songdo in Korea. It's a, it's a very expensive solution. It's a way to create smart cities. It will, you will have to pay 20 billion or 40 billion. That's how expensive these cities are. But at least you could also say it's very interesting from an experiment side to see what happens. Do they work? Um, what the responses are? And you can imagine if you have a green field, it's a lot easier to create um, driverless cars than to do that in the city of New York, for instance. So that's one taste, a city in a box. And um, there are in China, in China, they are really looking very serious at these possibilities. So they order the city and they you can build them anywhere you want. Uh, the second concept is called sensible cities. That's coming from MIT, also very interesting. Um, that perspective is like All this. attendees are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. Just put sensors everywhere. That's that's what MIT is saying. And then look at MIT. And he's he's made some a very interesting proof of concept. So he's put all these sensors in the in the city caps or in, in New York and and then he made prediction. Now then he made uh, calculations saying that uh, from all the data points he has seen that it's quite easy to realize to take a cap together because he can see when you took a cap and someone else very close by going to to the same um, to the same destination um, and from that calculations he predict he, he he is creating new models or hoping to create new models interfaces to solve that kind of solution sensible cities combination of senses and being able to being able to send, um, it's part of the future um, of, of the Internet of Things in cities. And the third one is called City as a Platform. I think that's very nicely related 
to to how we could look at these possibilities, like um, our society, so to say. Like you can imagine a platform, um, and we made a, a sketch of that on the top where you see the real city, the real life, the physical parts. Then there's an API level, and then when you go down, there's the infrastructure. Um, platform, pla there's a lot of talk about platform economies, and there's a lot of ways to look at these platforms being able to change the city. Um, one of them could be Uber, for instance, connecting cars. Um, Uber is also opening up their APIs um, and, and creating new platforms for transportation. So that's that's the third one. So from these three tastes, we we that's what we actually do. We describe what it is to be, get a better understanding, give examples, and 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 then we come to some conclusions. And you will find them in the report itself, of course. Um, and I would, I would like to address three of them. Then the first one is really to understand that sensing is still in its infancy, which is um, there's a lot of potential to, to be opened up. So yes, we ain't seen nothing yet. That's the message. Um, the second one is about the fact that consumers decide the pace of um, the smartness of a city. So as soon as consumers decide when to take, when to buy a, uh, a driverless car, or when to buy solar systems with uh, a, a, um, with sensors, etc., um, then it will speed up. And it's really important to to understand that, uh, that that you and I and the individuals still play a key role, which sometimes is. Is not a lot of discuss when you read stuff on smart cities. In, in a lot of the smart city stuff, there is the individual is just um, someone on the, uh, at the background. Um, and the third one I would like to address is the fact that the vertical boundaries are, are fading. So it's because of the possibilities of the technology, it's it's becoming very difficult to say what business are you in when you're doing. When you're changing the city, if you if you create new platforms, what's this new platform doing? And um, I think that's a very interesting one, but also a very difficult one to understand. That um, um, the old verticals that we've all worked with and the, the and, and which are all in in IT systems, they are now doing a lot of crossovers. So that's the one, two, three. Conclusions I would like to share with you, um, and the rest you can read in the report yourself. Ha, ah, cool. So, um, a great short introduction. Uh, um, I hope that people don't think that they now don't need to read your report. So, I would the first invitation is please le please read the report so that you know what what type of things we actually put out there. Um, uh, uh, there's one question that I think is interesting to discuss is what is Sajeti doing right now actively to be part of this market and I'm sure Menno you have an idea about this but maybe others on the call as well so if you have an idea about this um, uh, um, perhaps you want to unmute yourself let me see if I can unmute everybody at the same time no I can't do that um, <coughs> maybe I can uh, Anyway, but maybe Menno, you can give an idea of, of what Sajeti is doing, what you know that we are doing in this space. Well, how is it relevant for us? Oh, I, w I was I was rather curious to hear from from others too, uh, Eric. Um, yes, I'm trying to unmute people first. Uh, if you're online, you can unmute yourself by pressing your microphone button. First, maybe the first answer, Eric, on that question. Yes. Is um, in any project related to the Internet of Things could be mentioned because I think a lot of them actually will change our city. So without putting a mark on it, saying it's it's a smart city project. So if you are, for instance, connecting cars uh, and, and there's projects that, that we are doing that, um, you are changing the city by that fact, which is which is different than 
um, you could also define the market of smart cities in so a city wants to put money in um, um, you know uh, to change the city and then it's a smart smart city project I know in in Belgium Paul Pullmans is doing work on smart cities um, I've been working on a tender for the European a, a European funded uh, tender on um, on smart cities too last week so that's what uh, I'm aware of but um, Okay, I I, I saw um, uh, Patrice Mar Marquette from Toulouse, uh, Patrick Marquette from Toulouse, uh, give a little comment. Maybe you can uh, uh, describe a little bit for the people. I've unmuted you, so maybe if you speak, we can actually hear you. Um, oh, he's muted himself. Back again. Mm -hmm. All right, but he says a simple but useful and very interesting application we can develop in a generic way is from a recent demand. From a prospect, it's about localization of infrastructure incidents by citizens involved in the life in the city. So that's very close to the city as a platform, I would feel. I think in general, if I look at things, it's very much in the high tech. It it sort of it, it breeds in the high tech division that we have, but it could easily blend over into I don't know, banking and transportation and insurance and God knows what other verticals. If if you really say the the vertical boundaries are fading. Um, it would. Would you say it touches every client of ours, or is there some clients that will not have to deal with Internet of Things in general? Well, I think every client. If you just imagine, um, um, let's talk about uh, paying with your smartphone, for instance, which is in, which is an Internet of Things thing. So you walk into a shop, you just take stuff that you want to buy, and you leave the store. This this scenario. And as soon as you leave the store, you've paid. So um, I think if, and then the whole concept of a store can change if this process is um, um, applied and the role of cities can change um, because it's, it's a lot more easy to, to get stuff in, um, and to buy stuff. Um, but is it high tech? Is it uh, it's mobile? I would say first, um, and and it's cloud. Um, you need to do analytics. So I'm not, and that's the other part of saying the vert. If the verticals are doing crossover, we are doing crossovers too, and we should as a company. Yep, you can't. Say it, it, I think you, you you can't just say it's high tech. Yep. Gosper has a, from the United States has an interesting question: Is do we see cities or city government uh, building infrastructure for this, or is this all private investment? Is this going to be commercial companies developing the platforms for Internet of Things, or is the government going to provide this infrastructure and I know make their city or country uh, the most competitive place when it comes to Internet of Things? Governments, I think, uh, they have they try to 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 get the the investments in. That's what they what that's what they do. I know from some cities here in the Netherlands that it's a it's a very difficult game they're they're in because everybody's looking at everybody and um, so they're they're pushing it. And of course, the telecom or um, the telcos play play an important role. And then the second part was what can they do to accelerate or make their city more competitive? Um, so what do you mean with um, more competitive? So what they try to do, a lot of cities try to go after these prizes. So there's, there's, there's a lot of prizes to win for the smarter city. So there's also a lot of smart city marketing. I'm not sure whether it's very useful. I'm, when you talk with cities, they all want to have the price, but in the end, of course, you want the technology to work and to actually change your city itself. All right, all right. Um, and um, is this going to be, uh, I don't know, 10% of our business in the coming years? Is this going to be 50% of our business or is this going to be in everything we do? How, 
Uh, we don't prepare questions, people. I'm really putting Menno on the spot here, so I'm interested to hear his answer. Me too. Um, it will impact our clients. So, for, for, so banks, for instance, and I gave you the example, if there, if there are other players who are in control of how you pay in the city, um, and, and banks are not, for instance, if that if that's will be the scenario, then it will impact our future. So there, there are many layers to, there are many ways to talk about the impact of smart cities and how it will relate to the revenue or the business of society. Because all our, almost, I think I would, you could also, all our clients will have impact from. So on the phone, uh, you can unmute yourself if you're online, just press your microphone icon. Um, if you're on the phone, you can press star six, I think, to unmute. Um, or you can ask them in the chat window that we have been using so far. It works pretty well. Um, a question here from Jos from uh, Groningen. He says, uh, uh, is it an idea or is it likely that Jetty could or would develop uh, products or would we still be hired to create a product through the client? So do you think Internet of Things presents an opportunity for Jetty to do start selling other things as well? I do think so. I do think so. So we have, we are now, and I'm very optimistic that we are now seeing the start of that, at that, and we have some basic technology from, um, I was, this morning I was in call with uh, David Escoffier in France. Um, basic technology to, to connect many things in the city. And from that basic technology, we, um, we will be better at, at selling uh, smart city solutions. And, and the same accounts for, we have some examples in con connecting um, cars and, and services for that, which, which will also be, become more important. Um, the market of smart cities, though, is, is weird or, or a little bit strange to grasp, I must say, um, because that was going to back to the to the earlier question. Um, I think there's mm, there's a lot of European money where you can work together with uh, other institutes and companies, and I still think that's very interesting. And that's also where David Escoffier worked on and, and Paul Pumas, because it's 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 helping us to create our own services and, and do R and D for for smarter cities, and and at the same time using that. Um, money, so to say, uh, for um, it, it makes it possible to realize things that otherwise wouldn't have been possible for us. And I would love a small question. <clears throat> Somebody is from Sweden. Huh? Yep, go ahead. So, um, uh, thanks very much for the presentation. It's, it's quite good. It's very interesting. And. So my question is the following one: How can we contact? Where can we contact you to provide you some POC or some ID where we can share it, and we could really do some small prototype or small things of of projects, some concepts, and to show it work? That would be, a, I think, a good start for such a JT to show uh, outside that what we are able to do, and we are very competent people here to do it. So how can can we can we a bit like make concrete uh, this, this kind of ideas? Um, and, and, and from what background are you talking? Are you, are you talking about how can we create something to sell? Um, therefore, you have to connect to the market, obviously. So, so are you talking from, from a certain country or, or socially global? So, so for, for example, here in Switzerland, I have initiated a big data project uh, with financial with uh, financial aspects. And but it it might and I think so we'll open soon a business on it. But the first things we did was to do POC and to show that look we are able to do it and we are currently doing it and what we can do after is to customize the solution for customers. But there is already a ground to show that. I think what could be nice <clears throat> what could be nice if we if would be to to start a small things or to share to put AD together and to do a small very simple POC project to show around. What strategy can do and how can strategy move on that? And, <clears throat> and so my question is, um, should we contact you directly or is there something already starting on that or already done on that? 
Uh, good question. So um, I think the most concrete connection to your question um, would be to have David Escoffier um, in, in this conversation. Uh, as said, he is, he is made a, I call it a basic technology, an enabler uh, to connect things. And I think that's, that's a really good starting point to create a, a POC because we will also need to demonstrate the capacity of, of SOGT. Um, and, and we have some IP around that. And, and it's, it's, it's just starting. So we had this call this morning where, in fact, David talked about um, doing a, um, a hackathon and, and get ideas from other SOGT people and SOGT labs in, in this concept. To, to create talks because that's what we need to to take steps to commercialize it. So, yeah, and I think in general, Internet of Things is really going to be a push towards uh, the end of the year, the beginning of next year, also commercially and in our services. Um, so I, I expect that we will have more interaction about this. So um, I see in the in the questions here to have ideas of can we have a platform where we can share things or what type of services can we develop or how can we do a, a proof of concept? Yoss says, well, I have there already a proof of concept for sharing ideas, blah, blah, blah. There are lots of discussions that we can and should have. And I think Team Park for now is our logical place to gather. The Sedeti Labs community would, would allow you to have discussions and conversations. but. What we're really looking for is for people to stand up and say, I want to push this, I want to help uh, advance this, I have an idea there. And then we can really connect you either to the marketing engine or we can help hunt for funding. We can uh, beg with our cust with our partners. Uh, we can attach yourself, uh, your initiative to whatever high tech is doing or what David is doing. Uh, there was ideas of doing like a demo lab in different countries or a traveling demo lab where we can show how different devices work together and how they can interact. So there are many ideas that we can have, but it, it, in the end, it comes down to people who want to sort of uh, show their passion and who, who can uh, share their ideas um, uh, around it. So, I, I, sorry, I, I fully understand that, and I am completely agree. It has to be based on individuals that that want to move forward. Uh, on my side, I'm 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 trying to. I'm, I was very interested by what has been said about shops, just to go in and get out and pay automatically. That's just an example. But uh, on on my side, I'm working on personal project on, on smart watches. With all smart watches can change the way to buy, the way to 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 act in the city. And I think yes, I will get uh, in contact with David and share with him small idea. And I I I will see if uh, if it can. If it can move to something, or if we can start to do something, or I don't know. But anyway, thank you for this contact, and I will, I will for sure contacting you soon. Um, right. I, I feel a lot of appetite for doing things with this. Uh, so, uh, Menno, what would you like people to do based on this report? So, this report, we want things with that. What, what would you like to ask people who are in this call? Well, I very much like this idea of um, of, of creating talks and solutions um, because I think that's that's where the, that will drive the uh, the energy, Eric. So, of course, I would love you to to share it with uh, with other society colleagues, with clients, etc. That's obvious, or Twitter about it, whatever. Um, but I, I'm I'm much more excited about the idea of of creating a, a uh, some process around um, ideas of making creating smartness, um, and and but I've, I've said that already. I think that this technology um, thing of David could be the right trigger to start that creativity. Yep. All right. But then talk about what it is and then this would be another talk but that's, I, I really see those things very much related and connected yep so I do feel that we should have an action an, an action item on our side that we open at least a logical page on Sedeti Labs community where we can direct people where they can land with their ideas and where they can find each other so um, 
So we'll set that up for sure and make sure there's a follow-up email uh, where people are pointed to the recording of this and invited to that discussion there so that uh, we can continue that. Um, now, uh, uh, before we hang up, um, I know that you're starting up a different series of reports on Design to Disrupt, um, where we would probably like some interaction as well. Can you give like a, a two-minute elevator pitch of this new topic and, and how Sudity Labs people could get engaged in that? Well, the very the, the, the simple version would be how to engage is I would we are really, really seeking uh, conversations with clients. So um, a role of anyone in Societe Labs could be uh, to connect us and and talk with clients about this topic because um, what we are doing now is. Um, uh, yes, we are writing the reports, but this is so, I would say this is so important for clients. Um, the, the whole idea that um, innovation in itself is speeding up and there's exponential possibilities of, for growth um, for, for organizations that really understand the, the different ways of the use of the technologies. Um, and that there, there's a lot of I would say there's a lot of um, um, stuff around. And this is not a very good pitch, I know, but the pitch is <laughs> like to, love to connect with clients in countries. So if you you're working for clients, if they are looking for ways to do more innovation, please connect us to them. That's the that's the message. Yeah, and I think we have, so there's uh, around design to disrupt is really about the disruption and radical acceleration. And there's already an executive intro and a summary, a summit report uh, that's going to be sent around. We will also send it to uh, CTT Labs uh, uh, fellows and members. Um, and we can come okay. to countries and do local events or local workshops with customers, or we can do a series of interviews. Um, we very much like to talk to customers about what they are seeing in disruption, how they're dealing with it, um, the opportunities they see in it and the threats and how they how they can't try to counter those. Um, so if you want to be involved in this research, I would say raise your hand, uh, go to a, talk to a customer and introduce us there. Um, and in general, just uh, keep an eye on, on, on what's coming out of the team and provide feedback and suggestions. Because um, it's really a big, big theme. It, it connects well into our verticals. It connects well into what our practices are doing. Um, so uh, um, I would say expect a lot in this space. Um, I put it on Team Park or, um, um, a week ago or something. The report itself. Yep. Yeah. So we'll send out. I'll send out a, an email that we're going to send out to salespeople. We'll also send it out to the labs fellows um, so that we can do that. And um, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make that work. Um, all right, thank you, Menno. A great, great topic. I think a great topic that we've done in our last report. I think we have a great thing coming in our next report. Um, any other comments by people, things we want to talk about, discuss? Um, any last minute questions or redirects? Menno, any final closing comments? No, I'm looking at the questions now. I'll follow up on some of what I see from people. Yep. Yeah, I think there's a lot of ideas coming past in the in the yeah. uh, chat box, so we'll make sure that we uh, make note of those and, uh, and and do something there. So, all right, thank you very much for spending uh, uh, 50 minutes of your time with us, and um, we have another one planned soon, I think already next week. So um, please dial in again. Um, we'll send you a reminder with the exact topic of that one because I can't recall by heart. Maybe Charlie can fill me in there very briefly while he's on mute. Um, and otherwise, you will see it in your email. And I look forward to seeing you again uh, next week or whenever the next one is. So uh, thank you very much and uh, see you all soon.